I get a lot of questions about CBD or cannabidiol. It's for sale everywhere, right? I consider it a natural supplement to an important body system, so it falls right in line with what we do here at Mount Olympus. So I want to do a quick tutorial on this from a pharmacist perspective. I think the most important question and relevant question that I've heard on this is this. I'm hearing CBD is good for everything, right? How can that be? Sounds like too good to be true, snake oil claims. So to answer that, let me just explain how the system in the body that it works on was discovered. It's called the endocannabinoid system, as in cannabis. Now you may ask, how did a body system get named after the marijuana plant? Fair question. And it's because the whole discovery process was kind of backwards. We found a substance that had an effect on the body before we had even discovered the system that it acted on. And that's backwards from what we usually do. So a little bit of history. We identified and isolated THC as the psychoactive ingredient in marijuana in 1964. And just from observing the effects of smoke and pot, like increased appetite and calming of the stomach, a small trial was done on some children after cancer treatments, giving THC orally in olive oil for nausea and vomiting, and it stopped it every time. No psychoactivity at the dose given, but complete clinical success. And we said, wow, this is great. But a lot of plants have medicinal properties, so it wasn't you know, exactly revolutionary. Then in the mid 80s, they discovered the receptor in the brain that THC connected with to have its effect. And they called it CB1, or the cannabinoid one receptor, because it interacted with substances that are like cannabis. But they began to wonder, why would there be a receptor in the brain for marijuana? You know, like God knew we were gonna smoke pot or something. Then they found another type of receptor and called it CB2, found throughout the entire body that would bind with another component of the marijuana plant called cannabidiol, or CBD. Now, this was looking like a real body system now, so they called it the endocannabinoid system. They had to have a name for it, which literally means like cannabis within, because the only substances they knew of at the time that it was activated by were these phytocannabinoids. Phyto means plants, and cannabinoid means like cannabis again. Then everybody thought, this receptor must be used by some other substance that the body makes. And the search was on then for that substance. Then in the 90s, they, f they finally found those substances that the body makes, and they called them anandamide and 2-AG. But the receptor system was already named the endocannabinoid system, or ECS, and that name stuck. So that's why we call it that, rather than a, a more descriptive name of what it does, like we call the digestive system, for example. Now we understand that it's a well-developed system found throughout the body in all vertebrates, anything with a backbone. So it'll work on your dog or your parrot, but check with your vet first. So this isn't just about somebody trying to find reasons to sell you marijuana and join the reefer subculture and the whole movement to legalize drugs. CBD truly does have far-reaching effects on the body. But these phytocannabinoids only work because they mimic your body's own activators of the ECS, your endocannabinoids, which are anandamide and 2-AG. Now, CBD cannot make you high or get you addicted. It comes from the hemp plant, a different variety of cannabis sativa and it naturally contains about 0.3% THC, the psychoactive component. Now compare this to the other species, Cannabis sativa indica, uh, the marijuana plant, which contains about 20% THC. Big difference. 20% THC will get you stoned, 0.3% will not. And the law limits CBD products to 0.3%, and the sellers are required to provide a certificate of analysis by an independent third party confirming that. CBD's cultivation and use were made legal by the Hemp Farming Act of 2018. There are a bunch of other compounds, over 100, in the cannabis plant, 
And we found that we get better results when the full spectrum of cannabinoids is used, all of them, not just isolated THC or CBD. So don't buy the isolate products. They call this the entourage effect, and it includes those small amounts of THC. So I recommend using a full spectrum product that will include a little bit of THC along with all the others. Okay? Now, but a word of warning, any of these products can cause a false positive on a drug test because CBD and THC molecule, molecules are so similar and common drug tests are often not very specific. So if a positive drug screen is gonna cost you your job or have other serious consequences, buy a CBD product that's THC free. You still get the other benefits. And it's sometimes called broad spectrum. It's less likely to cause a false positive. It could still happen. But if you do get a false positive on a drug test from using a CBD product, ask for a more specific blood test and it will show negative for THC. So what is CBD being used for? Well, lots of things. And the research on this is going nuts right now. But some of the uses that have got good solid evidence of effectiveness are uh, poor sleep. It helps you get deeper sleep without grogginess. And deep sleep is restorative. Anxiety calms and protects the nerves in the brain. CBD2 receptors not usually found in the brain seem to pop up in high numbers in the brain in disease states or, or brain trauma to contain damage. It's amazing. Uh, chronic pain. It's not for acute pain like trauma, but for the chronic pain like arthritis or joint pain, uh, nerve pain, fibromyalgia, or just general soreness. It can potentiate or reduce the dose needed for opiates like hydrocodone or oxycodone by its very presence without causing dependence. So that's awesome. Uh, bone density. All people with stages of osteoporosis has been shown in studies to increase bone formation and decrease bone loss. Uh, in fact, one animal study showed bone breaks healed in 30% less time with a mix of CBD and THC. So that's pretty, pretty promising. Um, inflammatory states, including in the gut, like IBS or colitis or common diarrhea and cramping, acid reflux, indigestion, nausea and vomiting, uh, seizures, again, calming down the brain. And it seems to have an effect on the immune system, moderating aggressive immune responses like in autoimmune diseases. Now, all the scientists working on cannabinoids in the ECS seem to agree that the focus of the endocannabinoid system is homeostasis, or maintaining the body in a functional and well state. It seems to modulate existing systems, which might explain its broad activity over such a huge range of symptoms. So if your ECS is dysfunctional, cannabinoids are an option that appears to be safe and effective. The ECS is involved in essentially all human disease. It's a big statement, but it's true. It really is a thrilling time of learning and discovery right now, and it's unfolding you know, right in front of us here. It's, it's exciting. So understanding and working through the body's endocannabinoid system has huge implications for keeping people well, preventive health, and, uh, and treating disease and suffering. It seems to be every bit as important as the digestive system or the endocrine system or the immune system. Now be sure and get a product, a quality product that's grown clean and free of pesticides. Prices are all over the place, so do a little shopping around. You shouldn't be paying more than about 20 cents per milligram of CBD, whether it's a topical cream, and those work very well, applied to joints or wherever, or oral drops. 